Today, October the 13th, marks the International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction, also known as IDDRR across the globe. On this day, we reflect on both the progress being made and the work to be done towards reducing disaster risk and loss of lives, livelihoods, and life chances in line with the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction 2015 to 2030. This framework provides countries with concrete actions to protect development gains from the risk of disaster. In Sedema participating states, the Regional Strategy for Comprehensive Disaster Management, or CDM, 2014 to 2024, is our vehicle for delivering the Sendai Framework results. It promotes the principles of addressing all hazards, all phases of the disaster management cycle, and engaging all people through collaboration between a range of actors, including the government, private sector, and other stakeholders. In this year, which coincides with the 30th anniversary of Sedema, the focus of IDDRR is on the sixth strategic target of the Sendai framework which speaks to substantially enhancing international cooperation to developing countries through adequate and sustainable support to complement their national actions for implementation of the present framework by 2030. This target acknowledges that international support is critical for low to middle income, climate affected countries to achieve sustainable adaptation priorities that build resilience and reduce risk. This strategic target is extremely relevant for Caribbean SIDS. Our region is one of the world's most vulnerable to hazards. In addition, the resilience conversation has evolved over time. Recently, Hurricanes Irma, Maria, and Dorian in 2017 and 2019 provide a glimpse into the future of the increase of climate impacts by tropical cyclones. We have seen seismic activity as observed in April this year with the explosive eruption of the La Soufrière volcano in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and more complex hazard occurrences as seen in August with the earthquake in Haiti, followed by the passage of tropical storm grace against a backdrop of COVID-19. With these catastrophic events come increasing damage and loss to the Caribbean and Americas region, which according to the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, accounted for 53% of reported global economic losses of US $2,908 billion between 2008 and 2017. The heaviest cost of storms relative to the size of their economies falls on the small island developing states of the Caribbean. Partnerships, regional and international cooperation are therefore fundamental to delivering the Comprehensive Disaster Management or CDM mandate. Over the years, Sedema has developed and sustained long-standing partnerships with international development partners, including through partner nations and multilateral organizations. In the period 2018 to 2020 alone, the Sedema Coordinating Unit mobilized over US 23 million with the support of our development partners towards resilience building in its participating states and benefited from technology transfer initiatives and information sharing. Some of our more recent work with international partners has been groundbreaking, including the Integrated Regional Logistics Hub in 2020, and establishing the Caribbean Resilient Recovery Facility, soon to be launched in 2021. We take this opportunity to convey thanks to all of our international partners for their continued commitment to the region's resilience building efforts. This is deeply valued. In the context of climate change, much more is required. The 2021 UN Adaptation Gap Report estimates that US $70 billion is required to meet climate change adaptation plans in developing countries. This figure could reach up to $300 billion 
in 2030 and 500 billion in 2050. Official Development Assistance, or ODA, to build capacity and mobilize resources is key to disaster risk reduction, especially in building sustainable communities. I must caution, though, that effectiveness of this support is increasingly being undermined by ODA eligibility criteria. All Sedima participating states, at the time 16, last appeared on the 2003 to 2004 OECD list of ODA eligible countries. 11 of the now 20 Sedima participating states appear on the 2021 list, with 10 of these falling into the upper middle income group. The principles of differentiation permeate into the support from an increasing number of development partners and threaten to undermine the principle of the one Sedima system. Also important is investment in national and regional institutions to increase implementation and their capacity to maximize the benefits of international cooperation. COVID-19 has made our resilience journey more complex. It has exposed existing vulnerability, exacerbated inequities, and derailed development trajectories. The future evolution of the pandemic remains uncertain, and the ongoing response is anticipated for some time to come. International cooperation and support, therefore, remains necessary. COVID-19 has reinforced that we are all in this together. Global emergencies can only be adequately addressed through impartial and inclusive international cooperation on disaster risk management. At SEDEMA, we look forward to continued and increased collaboration with the international community to support the implementation of national and regional risk reduction actions. Only together can we achieve our regional goal of safer, more resilient and sustainable SEDEMA participating states through comprehensive disaster management. I thank you.